thank you so much for being a part of our study. The reason why I'm laughing, this is my fifth cup of coffee that Rudy has given me. So if I start shaking, you'll know what's happening. Uh, we're in Luke chapter 11, and uh, we're looking at verse 14 through 23. Uh, this is one of those tough ones to look at, so here we go. Uh, Jesus was casting out a demon uh, that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the one who had been mute spoke. The crowds were amazed. Uh, interesting note, just really quick. Amazement doesn't mean people are following Jesus. Following Jesus is the distinction of a, a disciple. So you can be amazed, you can be in awe, but you got to move on a little further. Yes. You got to go where Jesus goes. Uh, some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. And others, to test him, kept demanding a sign from heaven. He knew what they were thinking. He said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself becomes a desert, and the house falls on the house. If Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Well, you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub. Now, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your exorcists cast them out? Therefore, they'll be your judges. If it is by the finger of God that I cast out the demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When a strong man fully armed guards his castle, his property is safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted, and he divides the plunder. He ends this by saying, whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, Rudy, you want to start us off with some comments? Well, one of the, re one of the things that this brings to my heart is uh, in the book of Revelation where Jesus says, who can open a door that I have closed or who can close a door that I have opened? Right. And every time we open ourselves up to something other than the kingdom, we leave a hole in our spirit that actually I believe that evil can travel through yeah. back and forth. And really, in reality, what we, what we end up having to do is have God close that door that that, that the evil can never walk into it. Yeah. And he accentuates that by saying that a strong man can protect his property and tell somebody stronger. Right. Well, don't think that you're, don't ever think that you're stronger than the evil one. Yes. But you know one who is stronger. Right. I love your saying that if the evil one comes knocking at the door, ask Jesus to open it. Correct, correct. And uh, so that's my kind of take yeah, on this. Yeah, let me throw in a couple of thoughts. Number one, well, let me just first of all, let's talk about the whole idea of the devil and demons. Jesus talked a lot about the devil and demons. And so C.S. Lewis has written, and C.S. Lewis very well put the idea that uh, one of the tricks of the devil is to make people think there isn't a devil. And, and, you know, if you don't think you have an enemy, your enemy's got a really good advantage over you. So it's it's important for us to recognize that there really is uh, non-bodily evil in the world that that we call the devil or demons uh, or Satan, various various terms. Uh, they're there and they're real. Uh, one man, after going through one of the concentration camps, after uh, World War II and people had been liberated said, I have no trouble at all in believing in hell or in the devil. Uh, and th those are just realities. Uh, so that's one thing that we need to be aware of. Now, there's a danger, and that's finding a demon behind every doorknob. Uh, and that's, that's a little saying that's been around for a long time. Uh, sometimes it is the world system that is empowered by the devil uh, but, but it's not so much a real entity, an evil spirit, it is we get captured by a world system or our own personal failings, which the Bible calls the flesh. So we have three enemies. We have the world, the flesh, and the devil. And they all oppose the work of God and they all work together. And the devil's behind them, 
uh, but the devil isn't always always there you okay on that yeah I mean we don't <clears throat> you know when I think about the millennium reign I can you know I could conceptualize why there was a world war that started yeah. but then Jesus lives on earth for a thousand years and still there's another world war how could that be yeah well that illuminated to me that the evil one's pretty bad yeah. but there's something wrong with our flesh too that actually pushes us forward too and we, we have to come to reckoning with that it's not the only the evil one that's doing it to us our flesh wants things that aren't right yeah and this life I believe we have this life so that we can come to grips with our failings so that we would always be able to say Jesus you are the only one worthy to reign correct that is so good so Jesus said in verse 19 now if I cast out demons uh, by the finger of God that the kingdom of God has come to you and one of the big things that I just builds my faith is to see people set free from the evil that has kept them trapped whether it's freedom from addiction or freedom from crime or freedom from bad habits and the transformation of human beings shows me the reality of God as much as anything and well when Moses is on the mountain with the Lord and the Lord revealed himself uh, to Moses he tells them that for those who hate me I will hate uh, for to the third and fourth generation yeah but for those who love me I will love for a thousand generations first things a thousand generation would be 40,000 years yeah uh, we haven't been on earth 40,000 years so if anybody had ever been right with God for a moment we're still under that yeah but there's a spiritual reality for those who turn away from God that it actually will last in a family to the third and fourth generation right uh, it's bad enough that you would allow the evil one to hurt you but do you want it to hurt your children and your children's children and right. your children's children's correct. children correct so I remember seeing some of my bad behaviors appear in my son and daughter. Mm -hmm. And I told the Lord, uh, I'll stand the consequences for my crime, but why does it have to hurt my children? Yeah, yeah. And really what uh, he began talking to me about is, is that you have to break the curse. Yeah. And in breaking the curse, it involved being forgiven of a lot of sin yeah. and those are the doors that we've opened up to spiritual bad spiritual realities and those have to be closed by God so that you're not reattacked it's good yep. and so for months each individual sin of my life he really made me he made me relive them and to ask him to close that door that it could never be opened again you got it Let's stop there because we're going to really pick up a theme just like that tomorrow. So why don't you have our closing prayer? Father, uh, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for your mercy that you closed doors that uh, the evil one could not open again in my life. And mm -hmm. Father, I confess that I reopen them myself sometimes. And uh, I pray that you forgive me. Mm -hmm. I pray that kind of forgiveness over the whole world, mm -hmm. Father over everyone that had lived before and ever will live in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Hey, thanks for being a part. God, Rudy, thank you. And God bless you lots. We'll see you tomorrow.